So here's the Toronto Maple Leafs roster from last season. Finally, they made it out of the first round, got past the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games, but unfortunately fell to the Florida Panthers in five in the second round. But one win in the second round isn't enough for me. No, this team needs to win a Stanley Cup. So that's what I'm gonna do today. But I'm gonna do it the most difficult way possible. I'm gonna trade the entire Toronto Maple Leafs core except for Austin Matthews, and I'm trading it all for rookies. And to make this video a bit more straightforward for myself, I'm just gonna go to rookie skaters here, and if you're a rookie skater, I'm allowed to trade for you. So like Mason McTavish, he wouldn't technically be a rookie skater for next season, but he is for last season, as in the 2022-2023 season. That's why he shows up as a rookie here. So if you're a rookie here, I'm allowed to trade you with a few exceptions. And one of those exceptions is Matty Beniers. Technically, he was a rookie last season. He ended up winning the Calder, but I just feel like it's not fair to bring like an 84 overall player onto our team that's 19 years old. So it has to be an 82 overall player and below, and they also have to be 23 years and younger. The reason I say 23 years and younger is technically Kuzmenko is a rookie. He's an 86 overall, 26 year old rookie. I could bring him onto the team, but that just seems like cheating to me. So Kuzmenko, you're over 82 overall, you're over 23 years old, so I can't bring you to the team. With that being said, let's immediately get some trades done. And I learned from my mistakes last time I did this with Connor McDavid, the New Jersey Devils are the first team we're making a deal with, Nemec, Luke Hughes, and Holtz. I'm trading for all three of these guys. So I don't really want to give up Mitch Marner in this deal right now, but I'm probably going to have to because I mean like I'm asking for three players with medium elite potential. They're all very young and have high overall for being their age. So I don't really want to give up Mitch Marner here because I'd rather do him in a different deal, but I have to consider I'm giving up Mitch Marner one player for three guys that have medium elite potential. So this could be the move for us. Okay, so I'm actually working on getting this deal done, and I just need to show you guys something that makes literally no sense to me. So I'm going to add this random AHL player into the deal. At the bottom it says Toronto would have more than 50 players in the organization, but if I remove him, then I'm going to have more than 45. Bro, what? So I guess we just give up two random AHL players and then this works? The only issue now is that New Jersey's $8 million over the cap, and I have no clue how I'm going to be able to free up $8 million for this team. Like, I don't think it would be possible. And while I contemplate how I'm going to get this deal done, a quick word from today's sponsor. I want to give a massive shout to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Factor is a meal prep company with chef created meals that are fresh, never frozen, and are designed by dietitians to ensure every single meal is packed with a ton of nutritional value. Summer's coming to an end and with school approaching, Factor is going to make your life so much easier. Factor is going to give you the convenience of not worrying about prep, no mess, and it's going to save you tons of time. On top of that, they have an incredibly wide menu that's going to cater to your taste preferences and health goals. Not only is Factor going to be perfect for those busy days, but it's also going to help you eliminate your takeout because Factor is going to be delivering you nutritious food fast. And if you thought this deal wasn't good enough, click the link below or scan the QR code on screen or go to go.factor75.com and use code FACTORSE44116 and get 50% off your first box. And once again, I want to give a massive shout to Factor for sponsoring today's video. So here's the deal I've been able to craft up. I'm going to offer this over to the New Jersey Devils and they're willing to accept this deal. But I'm not really sure if I want to do this specific deal. I don't know why. Like, I mean, we get three amazing players that are going to be great for our future only giving up Mitch Marner but I feel like we could use Mitch Marner in another deal and probably get something else I'm gonna not do this yet worst case Ontario though we come back and make this deal I have a plan here but we need to trade John Tavares first we have to get his contract off the books once Tavares is gone then we're gonna be cooking which team can take this contract San Jose can I know they have some young rookies here or I hope they do so I could go with William Eklund medium elite potential player 19 years old 77 overall he's technically a rookie still even though I think he doesn't reach the qualifications for the upcoming season we're not going to worry about that Johnny T straight up for him I want a second round pick at least I mean if we can get rid of John Tavares's contract then I'm not going to complain I'm also not going to go for a second a third and a fourth they're saying no to that take the third out can I get this deal okay we might just be doing Johnny T straight up for Eklund they're still saying no to that. I mean, I understand why you don't want the $11 million cap hit. Like, I don't want it. So here's an extra third round pick just for you to take it. They're still saying no to that. So is the third and fourth enough to get this deal done? They're still saying no. I guess I'm going to have to give up a second rounder. I didn't really want to, but I mean, I think we just have to do it. Okay, this is getting stupid now. A second rounder and what? A fourth, I guess. I didn't want to give up this many assets, but if I have to... Okay, at this point, I'm just going to give up whatever it takes to get John Tavares off our team. Not like John Tavares is a bad player by any means, but at $11 million, okay, we're moving on from this deal. 
Eklund is just not happening. I think this is the play. We're going to bring in Marco Rossi as one of our guys here. 76 overall, minimally potential. And we can also get one of our goaltenders in Jesper Wallstead. Both of those guys for John Tavares. And then we're going to have to give them something else. They need a goaltender. So what do we have for goalies? I know we have Sam Sonoff and Matt Murray. Does Matt Murray have any trade value at this point? He's got a bit of trade value, but also Sam Sonoff has a handful. What else do I need to give up here? Probably a couple picks. I'll give you two seconds. We'll start with one second. Is one second enough to get this down? I'm assuming not. They're saying no. So two second rounders. And then we have our future goalie and a great centerpiece. Is that going to get it done? They're still saying no to that. I could give you a first rounder, but I don't really want to. So two seconds, a third. John Tavares, Samsonov for Rossi and Wallstead still saying no i guess we're gonna have to add that first round pick into this deal i'll give you a first rounder for 2024 that's got a handful of value there you go you're saying no to that and then here's two, a third rounder i was gonna say two thirds a third and a fourth if they don't accept this deal we're moving on i don't know how we're gonna trade john Tavares. i just don't know how this is gonna get done so i've completely given up with just trading picks eric gustafson i'm packaging you up with john Tavares, and then a second rounder i've gone back to trying to get eklund on the team is this enough to get it done you're still saying no, ain't no way. Third rounder then. I'm bringing him onto the team by any means necessary now. I need him on this team. We're very close in value, they just said. Okay, a six rounder as well. All this for Eklund, and then I get John Tavares off the team. We cleared up $11 million cap space, probably a bit more actually. Now we're about to make a massive move when it comes with the New Jersey Devils. There's a lot of moving pieces about to happen here though. So this is what we're starting off with. Wood and Palat. I'm going to bring both of these guys onto the team. That frees up $9 million for the New Jersey Devils. Then that makes it easier for me to trade Mitch Marner over to their team. So what do you want for both of these guys? Probably not that much. I could give you a pick, but I don't really want to give up some picks right now. So I'll give you Volt and whoever this is. And I'll take this guy out of the deal. So two prospects. I think the values are pretty fair there. Okay, they're accepting that deal. They freed up $9 million. We acquired another $9 million, but now I'm gonna flip Wood and Platt somewhere else. So Arizona, here's Andre Platt. You're giving me a fourth and a sixth. I'll take it. I honestly don't really care what I have to give up to get rid of them. And then Miles Wood, where are you off to? You could go to Edmonton, sure, for a seventh rounder. And that frees up another $3.2 million for us. We have $12.9 million in cap space. Now it's time to work with the New Jersey Devils and get what we really want. So Nemec, Hughes, Holtz, all three of you, I'm going to give you Mitch Marner in this deal. That should be enough, honestly. Like if Mitch Marner isn't enough for all three of those guys, we might just have to move on. Actually, give me a first rounder. What are we doing here? I'm giving you Mitch Marner franchise potential, and you're just giving me three guys with medium elite. So give me a first rounder as well. Actually, give me two first rounders. I mean, I better make sure I get like all the assets I possibly can get. So I'll offer you that. You're saying no. I'm not shocked whatsoever. I'll take one first rounder out. They're saying no. If I give you a second rounder or something, can I get that extra first? Because I mean, taking an extra first rounder isn't bad because all the first round picks I acquire, I can use in the next upcoming draft to bring in more rookies. They're saying no to that. Okay, I think we're just gonna have to do Marner straight for all three of these guys. They're saying yes to that. We might have lost a great piece of Mitch Marner, but we just brought three great players in. And three is better than one, if you ask me. So in the last version of this video I did, I had Devin Levi in between the pipes. But I don't want to do that this time around. So Jesper Wallstead, you're going to be our number one goaltender. Let's also bring Marco Rossi onto the team. No more playing around here. We want to bring in the elite players. If we want to win a Stanley Cup here, why are we settling for good deals? No, I just want straight studs. I completely forgot we still had Sam Sonoff on this team. Can we do this deal straight up for Rossi and Wallstead? I think we can. Our trade values seem to be pretty close, so... I better ask for a second rounder as well. Last thing I want is them immediately accepting that deal and I don't get the extra picks that I could have got. A second and a fourth, we'll offer that, they're saying no. Take the fourth rounder out, can I get this with a second, they're saying no. I think I'm just gonna have to do this straight up. They're actually rejecting that, so at least I know that we need to give up more. I've definitely done trades where I've offered a package, they immediately say yes, and we could have gotten way more. A third rounder is not gonna be enough to be the difference maker here, but a third and a fourth, and the fourth coming from Arizona, that's the difference maker ah yes a deal not going through because somebody wouldn't offer a fourth round pick an elite backup goaltender i mean i always could go with the man from st louis joel holfer i think that's the move i don't want to reuse a ton of players i've used in the past but this is joel holfer and y'all don't even know what joel holfer is about this man he's gonna pick up six shutouts next season with a 920 save percentage and a 226 goals against that's a guaranteed 
fact. There is no way that statement backfires on me. Nope. That is exactly going to happen. And he's going to lead St. Louis to the postseason. I already started setting unrealistic expectations. So I might as well just dig myself into a hole at this point. Yeah. Joel Holford leading us to the playoffs. That take is going to age so poorly. We're probably going to end up as a bottom five team or something. And Joel Holford is going to have a goals against of three or something. I've already made the statement. I'm not taking it out of the video. Let's see how it ages. Also, Wyatt Johnson, 81 overall, 19 years old. You're the next dude we're trading for. So Nick Robertson and somebody else. I'll give you this guy. Don't really know too much about him. Oh, I can't do that. So I'll give you a pick instead. I don't really want to take on a contract from them. I mean, I could. It's not the end of the world. So here's a sixth round pick from Arizona. Show it to Arizona. They've really been helping us out so far. Okay, so for some reason, Chicago wants Ryan O'Reilly and Jake Muzzin. So you can give me Kevin Korczynski and Lucas Reichel. The fact that this deal is even being contemplated right now makes no sense. There you go. There's two picks for you. A bit low, so I'll just have to include a seventh. And then a seventh rounder is going to make the difference. The seventh rounder from Edmonton we got in the Miles Wood deal. That's the difference maker. So we got Korczynski and we got Lucas Reichel. You know what? I really want Brant Clark. I don't know why, but I just feel like he'd be a fantastic right defense in for us. And now it's time to start trading first round pick. Actually, I'm not going to trade this first rounder yet. I'm going to wait till I completely deplete the team. Then the trade value for these first round picks are going to be at their highest. And then I'll acquire them. But as of right now, the second round picks, hold on, they got a bit of value here. Three second round picks for Brant Clark. Hold on, the values actually sort of match here. If I just do a bunch of second rounders and two fifth rounders, I mean, there's no reason they should ever accept this deal. It makes complete sense they said no to that deal. So I think this is the play. Victor Soderstrom and Don Gunther. Don Gunther, there's a very low chance I get you on this team. But Victor Soderstrom, I definitely could get you here somehow. So I know you want Matthew Nyes. He's going to be the main piece in this deal. And I'll give you a little grin as well. Matthew Nyes, little grin, and who else do you want? Bunting. Why not? Okay, hold on here. I actually have a great idea. We're going to take Zach Cassian's contract on for the next two seasons. It's going to hurt for us but I don't think it's going to affect us too bad salary-wise. Then I'll be able to get this deal done because he lowers the trade value for Arizona. They're still saying no to this deal, but if I add two second rounders, I think that's enough. We'll start with one second rounder though, because if I only need to do one, then I'll just do one. So I'll offer that. They're saying no. Now, if I add another second rounder, we'll do two second rounders, Lilligren, Nyes, Bunting for Soderstrom, Gunther, and then Zach Cassian for the next two seasons. I thought that would work. I really did. Does a fifth round pick that's actually wanted by Arizona worth more than Bunting? It might be. It is. You're telling me you'd rather have a fifth round pick than Michael Bunting. That's very interesting. I completely forgot Morgan Riley was still on our team. Okay, yeah, you're getting traded along with a first round pick. And I'm sending that to Detroit. 2024 though, that'll probably be like the 16th overall pick. I'm okay with trading the 16th overall pick in Morgan Riley for Edvinson and Casper. A first rounder for 2024. Is that enough? No. Okay, actually, I just offered that deal. I'm bugging. There you go. I probably gave up a bit too much, but you know what? That's okay because we got the two guys we wanted. There's no way this deal gets it done, but I'm still going to offer it just because. Because, I mean, everything I'm offering, they want. Well, I'm not, okay, I'm not giving you a first rounder. Hold on, let's relax here. Seventh rounder? You don't want the fourth, but I think the fourth will be enough to get it done. They're saying it's still low for them. I'll add a third instead. I'll do a third and a sixth, and then that should be enough, and then we'll have Jared check. Okay, we got Jerichek on the team. And we really didn't have to give up that much. So can I give you a 2025 first round pick for Brant Clark? Straight up. You're saying no to that. I'm not overly surprised. Like if the LA Kings accepted that, they need to fire their GM, get rid of every single person helping that organization because that's an awful deal. Here's a fifth and a seventh though. Okay, no, let's get serious here. A first round pick's probably not going to be enough, but a first and a second... That's definitely enough to get this deal done. Oh, it's not. All right, then they're playing hardball. Fifth and seventh, second, first. I'm saying numbers, but it don't matter. The deal's done. So from the Nashville Predators, I'm looking at two guys, Kemble and Evangelista. That's right, boys. I learned what his name is. I'm currently watching a video on YouTube of him scoring his first career goal. And I'm just listening to the announcer on how he says it. So Evangelista, now that I know your name, I'll actually probably add you to the team. Kemble, my only issue with you is you're a 69 overall at 18 years old. And I think that's going to take too long for you to develop. And Evangelista, Lista, you'll be an 80 overall next season so yeah we're making the move for you so you can have connor timmons and david camp i know i'm overpaying but it doesn't really matter because i'm getting the guy i need 
So I'm looking at the defense, I actually have seven defensemen here, and I have three for both sides. So Soderstrom, you're the leftover guy here, so I'm trading you. Or I trade Kevin Korczynski, because he'll take a couple more years to develop, and then Soderstrom, you could play on the third pairing. You have decent chemistry in that third pairing too, so I mean, that might be the move. And I can trade one of these guys for another great forward. I think I'm going to do that. Kevin Korczynski, I'm trading you. You know what, Montreal? I'll do a deal with you instead. And we'll bring in Slikovsky. We're also throwing Paul Byram in this deal, because then he'll lower the trade value for Montreal because his contract's so bad. Yeah, they accept that deal. And you know, let's go get Bobby Brink. He doesn't have high trade value by any means. We'll bring him to the team. Why not? In exchange for Bobby Brink, you guys can have Justin Hall and Cali Yarcrow. I think that's a fair deal for Bobby Brink. There we go. Got another right winger on the team. So we got to bring one more forward onto the team. So I'm making one final deal with Detroit to bring in Bear Grin. He'll be a good fourth line player for us, but I guess they don't want these two guys. Yeah, I guess the two guys I offered, I mean, don't really fit their trade block by any means. So I'm not overly surprised. So here's a 2027 seven third round pick we're giving more than enough so we're gonna get this deal done real easy so here's what the team's looking like after all the moves have been made obviously we're not gonna be good this season by any means like more than likely we were finishing dead last in the entire league but that actually works for me because we'll end up getting the first overall pick and that's gonna be Connor Bedard and worst case Ontario if we don't get the first overall pick we're gonna trade for it so no matter what happens Connor Bedard is gonna be on the team next season also I want Jesper Walsh as our starting goaltender just because his potential is higher I mean Joel Holford's an absolutely elite goaltender and he'd be fantastic as our starter but Jesper Walsh said also has medium elite potential and I want to maximize that so with absolutely every trade completed let's go ahead and simulate to the season and ideally win about five games this season that's what we're hoping for so things definitely didn't go as bad as I was hoping for 38 37 and 7 and 22nd in the entire league now you might be wondering how is it possible that a team full of rookies in Austin Matthews finished 22nd in the entire league so austin matthews is casually going to pick up 71 goals and 42 helpers for 113 points the funniest thing about this is literally probably about four or five minutes ago i opened up my phone and look at twitter austin matthews signed the four-year extension right after he signed his extension 71 goals the timing on that is wild also, shout out to Dylan Gunther picking up 82 points. You'll love to see it. Meanwhile, for Jesper Wallstead, considering the team in front of him, 28 wins, a 902, and a 324 isn't really that bad. You're still only a 79 overall, though. Same with Joel Holfer. I was hoping that you would jump up one or two overalls, so maybe you'll make the jump during the offseason. If you don't, we could be in a lot of trouble. One thing that I actually find really wild about this season was I was contemplating trading for Detroit's first overall pick because I was assuming they wouldn't make the playoffs and they wouldn't be that dominant of a team. And then they made the Stanley Cup final and lost to the Minnesota Wild in seven games. So thankfully I didn't trade for that pick. And it also sucks that our pick doesn't have any value because it's going to be like the 16th overall. Unless something incredible happens here and we jump from like 16 to 1 or something. But I think we all know that's not happening. So this is what the draft lottery results are looking like. Where's the Toronto Maple Leafs? 11. It's not too bad. If I package it up with another first rounder, we could probably get into the top five. All right, so I'm just going to try this. The first overall pick. And I'm going to package up a bunch of picks that we have. So our 11th overall and then the first rounder for 2026 and then maybe a first rounder for 2027 all three of these picks for the first overall i can't believe they accepted that did we get finessed we might have got finessed also this isn't against the rules because technically Karim bedard's a rookie so we're gonna make this selection here Karim bedard welcome to the toronto maple leafs the fact that all it took was the 11th overall pick and two other first rounders to get the first overall makes no sense so Karim bedard obviously i'm gonna sign you to a rookie deal i mean i don't think that really need to be discussed but our biggest issue here is now that austin matthews had that 71 goal season i have to give him an extension because as i said because as i said earlier he signed his in real life extension in the middle of me recording this video so he's not extended for next season right now and austin matthews after a 71 goal campaign what do you want that's not wild i mean you only want a one-year deal but 11.75 isn't the end of the world i'll wait till the beginning of next season then he'll probably smarten up and i'll be able to give him like a seven-year deal or something but right now it actually might not be too difficult to bring him back but there's a handful of guys that do got to bring back and lucas reichel i'll do four years at 3.1 that's pretty reasonable i'm also not going to show every single extension i give out like this one bergen 1.5 for the next five he's a great guy to play on the fourth line he fits the role perfectly so of course i want to bring him back and yeah i'm not showing all these extensions but i'll show a few of them so as i said earlier i'm not going to show every extension but holtz i don't know if i want to give you this much maybe i can do four years at 7.5 what'd you do last season hold on were you putting up elite numbers last season if you were i can make the deal seven million for a 50 point guy i don't know about that one. Oh, i made a mistake didn't i 
I simulated about a month and now he wants 12.4. We might be in a lot of trouble. So right now our team's looking incredible led by Austin Matthews who's still 96 overall. I think he was a 96 overall last season. Maybe he was a 95. It don't matter. He's still the best player on this team. Dylan Gunther's jumping up to an 87 so shout out to him. Connor Bedard's gonna be manning the second line. He's got Slikovsky. He's got Johnston and the bottom six it's slowly developing to something pretty solid here. The defense, that's looking incredible, but it's not developing at the pace I was hoping for. I was hoping Luke Hughes would be like an 85, 86 overall right now, but hey, I'll take an 82, I guess. And in between the pipes, Wallstead and Holford, both 82 overalls. I'm looking forward to seeing what this tandem can do. So is Austin Matthews gonna be reasonable? Incredibly reasonable, actually. We'll do 11.25 for eight years. Steal of a deal. Too bad you didn't take an eight-year deal in real life. I would say that's my only issue with that deal. Also, we're gonna do Holtz here at 7 million for four years. I think 7 million might be a little too much for him, but considering he was at one point asking for 12, I'll definitely take seven. Well, I guess you could say it was a pretty successful season. First in the Atlantic division, Division, and we're also first in the entire league 55 20 and 7 I don't know how that happened like I was expecting us to be a playoff team maybe 12th 13th in the entire league but first 3.71 goals per game only allowing three which really isn't that bad with scoring frequency on high I don't know what to say about this how are we good I mean I'm not overly surprised we're good but this good I was not expecting Austin Matthews 62 goals 57 helpers 119 points White Johnston 75, Holtz is picking up 73, Bedard 72. No, real talk. If we don't win a Stanley Cup this season, we're definitely winning it next season. Meanwhile, both of our goaltenders were splitting starts this season. Wallstead's picking up 28 wins. Joel Holfer's picking up 27. A 909 and a 283 for Wallstead, and a 304 and a 902 for Holfer. If you ask me, of course, we gotta go with Wallstead in the postseason. Although Joel Holfer is a St. Louis legend, even though he's played like four games for us, I think you gotta go with Wallstead. He's just got better numbers. And in our first postseason appearance, who are we gonna be taking on? The New York Rangers. We're the heavily favored team, so you already know what that means. We're losing in five games because that's really the only logical outcome. So whatever y'all do here, please do not lose in the first round. We're the best team in the entire league. Still haven't figured out how we're the best team, but just don't lose in the first round. All right, things are actually looking really good right now. We have a 3-1 series lead. Can we close out in game five? Ain't no way that just happened. Are we actually gonna play up to our potential here and not fold? Didn't expect that one to happen. Also, shout out to Holtz, who's picking up 10 points in five games. Keep doing your thing. So entering our next matchup, now we're gonna be taking on the Detroit Red Wings, and they actually completed the upset over the Boston Bruins. So by rights, Detroit really shouldn't be an issue for us. But then again, they did just take down the favored Boston Bruins, so anything could really happen here. So let's go ahead and simulate through the first five games this time around. Because honestly, I think it's only gonna take five games for us to take this series. And through the first five games, things are actually looking pretty solid. We got ourselves a 3-2 series lead, so let's close it out in game six. Never mind, we're off to game seven. You hate to see it you really do so after hyping this team up so much here we are heading into game seven i definitely wasn't expecting this series to go to game seven but now we're down 2-0 in the first period no this game's all wrapped up going out 5-1 in game seven when you're the best team in the entire league also joel holfer was in between the pipes i mean i don't make the decision on who's in net for us but i guess we went with joel holfer hey man they must have saw something in him but it doesn't matter we're falling in game seven all right so i just remembered detroit made the stanley cup final last season and then they went ahead and made the stanley cup final again this season Season. so I don't know why I was sleeping on this team like back-to-back -back Stanley Cup appearances for them if we have to face Detroit next season I'm actually gonna be a bit nervous also show to the Avs for winning a Stanley Cup they actually swept Detroit not a good look for them all right so I don't really have an issue with the point production from anyone from this team like Gunther 15 Holtz 15 Matthews 13 the only issue I have with Matthews is three goals you scored three goals how many goals did you score during the regular season 62 and then the season before you scored 71 and you're telling me in 12 postseason games games you only could pick up three goals yeah if we're gonna win a stanley cup you gotta start scoring more goals shooting 5.4 percent no we can't win a stanley cup with those numbers also joel holfer what'd your numbers look like in between the pipes why can't i look at goalies no seriously why can't i look at goalies all right then Joel Holfer, I don't know what you did. So I don't think we have any picks in this upcoming draft. So I'm just going to go ahead and simulate through the entire thing. We're going to hit the re-sign phase and then we have some important moves to make. So this is a huge moment for us because we have to re-sign everyone for next season. So it's either we re-sign everyone and we're fine or we can't re-sign everyone and we got one more season to do this. So let's start extending contracts. And Dylan Gunther, I was expecting you to ask for way more than 9.8 million. So I'll give you what? 9.475? I think that's reasonable and I think you'll accept that. Hopefully you decide to be a bit more reasonable in what you're asking. Stakovsky, you're joking, right? 13 million for 61 points. 
Yeah, not a chance that's happening. So here's what the roster is looking like heading into this season. Don Gunther's making a massive jump. He's up to a 90, and so is Eklund. Even though I only have him on the third line, a 90 overall there isn't that bad. Like, I mean, I could put him on the second, and I could put him on the first. Do I put him on the first? That could be the move here. Let me think about this for a second. So I could technically go with this and have Eklund on the second line. He gets the plus two. He's a 90 overall playing with Bedard and Slikovsky. That might not be bad. And then we have two amazing lines. The third line's still really good, even with that minus one overall. And then the fourth line looks great. The defense is looking like this. None of these guys have really developed. I was hoping Luke Hughes would be like an 88 overall by now. Soderstrom, I was hoping like an 85. But yeah, none of these guys have really just developed the way I was hoping for. And Jesper Wallstead, he's up to an 85. Joel Hofer's an 82. That's a goaltending tandem I can work with. Now let's go see if Stokowski's still bugging on what he wants for a contract. Like if he's still asking for 13 million, he's wilding. Like I don't even know why he would even contemplate that. Like 12 million for an 84 overall. Eklund, I kind of understand you. You're a 90 overall, 8.7 that's not the worst contract in the world so things are looking absolutely fantastic for the Toronto Maple Leafs right now once again first in the entire league even better this season 57 18 and 7 averaging over four goals a game and only allowing 2.88 we're one of the best offensive teams in the league the best defensive team if that's not a formula for a Stanley Cup I don't know what is Austin Matthews is once again leading the team in points he's got 115 61 goals 54 helpers Dylan Gunther 106 points is he still 90 overall he's up to a 91 you'll love to see it and Eklund what a fantastic decision it was for me to put you on the second line 98 points Bedard he's got 88 and here's Slikovsky the 13 million dollar man ain't no way also Mark Rossi picked up 46 points so maybe 3.9 million for him isn't outrageous but more importantly what was Jesper Wallstead doing incredible numbers 43 wins a 907 and a 283 but also Joel Hofer shout to him 14 wins only four losses three shots a 906 and a 281 so for whatever reason if Jesper Wallstead has to leave the game I'm perfectly fine with Joel Hofer taking over however we do have one main issue in our first matchup we have the Detroit Red Wings I'm very nervous so if we can get past the Detroit Red Wings it's gonna be a breeze we'll be able to win a Stanley Cup but first we have to get past this team and I was gonna say it would be very difficult but here we are a 3-1 series lead maybe we'll actually be able to do this we're about to blow a 3-1 series lead aren't we oh we're not okay thankfully we're not blowing a 3-1 series lead we're getting past Detroit and we're about to go get ourselves a Stanley Cup Matthews this is the production I wanted last postseason eight goals in six games you're telling me this man picked up more goals in six games than he was able to last postseason in 12. sometimes it just doesn't make sense but now we've got past detroit it's not going to get any easier for us because now we have to take on the tampa bay lightning and of course vasilevsky's still in between the pipes for that team and you already know he can steal a series or two so at this point tampa still has a majority of their core round so this definitely is going to be an easy matchup for us by any means but currently things aren't looking good i was about to say things aren't looking too bad because we won game one but now we're down 3-1 in the series. I think we already know where this is headed. To a Game 7? That's not where I would have thought it would be headed, but here we are. Back-to-back -back wins in Game 5 and Game 6, and we're off to Game 7. So Toronto, all I ask is you not to fold here. You've made the comeback. You were down 3-1 in the series. We're allowing a goal in the first period, but we're responding in the second with three of our own don't fold in the third period just close this game out Hagel was able to score late in the third period but it's not enough we're completing the 3-1 series comeback we need to win a stanley cup now stop disappointing me like real talk there's no reason we should have just won that last series against tampa but here we are and now we gotta take on the boston bruins now boston they're probably not as strong as they were a handful of years ago but they're still the boston bruins playing the toronto maple leafs so just by that fact alone they get a plus three overall boost so based on the regular season standings we should be able to take down Boston because we want 12 more games than them. But as we know, the regular season just doesn't mean anything. So far, we split the first four games. Going into game five, this is a massive one. We're going to be taking that in an OT win. And can we close it out in game six? Yes, we can. And now we're taking on the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup final. The team that just won last season. This is definitely not going to be an easy matchup for us. So if we really want to win this series, I need an Austin Matthews masterclass. I need him picking up two goals per game. And right now, things aren't looking great. Although we're tied in the series, we did drop games. Game one, seven to three. That's definitely not ideal. Game five is going to be a massive one, though. We got to win this one, and we're doing it in overtime. Can we close this series out and win a Stanley Cup in game six? Yes, we can. Another overtime win for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're Stanley Cup champions, and we finally won Austin Matthews' Stanley Cup, and we also won it through trading every single player on this team. 
you love to see it, you really do. Austin Matthews, incredible numbers in the postseason. You picked up 39 points, but you also picked up 24 goals. 24 goals in 25 games, that's what we needed in order to win a Stanley Cup. We can't have you picking up three goals in 12 games. We need 24 and 25, you love to see it. And in between the pipes, Jesper Wallstead, 15 wins. Show to Joel Holford, he picked up one, a 900 save percentage and a 328 goals against. How did we win a Stanley Cup with those numbers? I don't know, but we did.